today we are talking about starting over in a new city. And this uh, episode really came from a uh, member of my community who asked me, hey, if I start over from scratch, what would that look like? So let's get right into it. Starting over from scratch, there's really two ways to go, right? It's starting over from scratch. Do I have money? Do I not have money? I'm going to assume we don't have a lot of money. And so uh, let's say I'm dropped in Nashville, Tennessee with no money. When it comes to finding deals, where a lot of people go wrong is they spend their wheels forever in Facebook groups and going to RIA meetups and talking about what they're going to do. And uh, at this stage, if you don't have a lot of money, but you want to get into real estate, you want to do your first wholesale deal, the amazing thing is the barrier to entry is low. And there's a lot of way to find deals that are not costly. But to find those deals, you do have to put time in if you don't have the money, right? When it comes to marketing, you either have time or money, right? You can spend money and you can hire people and you can hire agencies um, to throw money at the issue of, of lead flow, or you can spend time. You can do bandit signs, door knocking, cold calling yourself, all of those things. So let's assume I had a grand in my name and I was in Nashville, Tennessee, right? Um, a lot of us, if we, if, like, and if I didn't have a grand, I could go, you know, uh, probably buy, rent a bike, buy a bike and do a uh, door dash on my bike to save a thousand dollars. Right. But most of us can find a way to save a thousand dollars with a little bit of time. So let's say I spend two weeks saving a thousand dollars. First thing I would do is I'd probably buy a vacant and absentee out of state list for that County. Um, I believe it's Davidson County in, in Nashville. So I'd buy for Davidson County an absentee out of state list and a vacant list. Um, that probably cost me, I'd probably buy 5,000 records. So it cost me a hundred bucks plus skip tracing. So it would cost me, let's say it costs 500 bucks between skip tracing and data. So the next thing I would do without a thousand bucks, I would have my list. I would go get like a batch dialer account or a ready mode account and I would start cold calling. That's all I do. I would cold call. There's so many scripts on YouTube online that you can get for free. I'd go grab a free script. If I was, if I didn't have the knowledge I have now and I'd start cold calling and I cold call whether it take a month, two months, three months, I cold call until I got that first deal, which in most markets is going to be 15, 20, $30,000. And then I would invest that first deal into scaling that marketing channel. So that might mean hiring cold callers at that point. Um, I wouldn't go do mail, pay-per-click, things of that nature yet because we're just not at the point to properly do that. But I would seriously consider going and hiring a cold caller. And then I, I would start building my basic systems. I would get a CRM account to track my leads. I would uh, buy more data. I would do a bunch of things of that nature. And then what, what, what we tackled at that point, right, once we start getting leads in the door consistently, then I'd spend all my time talking to as many sellers as possible. I'd still be cold calling myself. So one cold caller... Um, up from that first deal, I'd probably have three, four, five leads coming from that cold caller. Then I'd also be cold calling myself on my end to uh, to try to get more leads and more deals that way. Um, and then I'd be working my pipeline every single day. So my day at this point would usually be show up to the office, wherever that be. Um, it could be my car, it could be my house, it could be my apartment if I'm living in a new city. And I would spend my mornings on my new leads. Sorry, I'd spend my mornings on my hot follow ups. I'd spend my mid mornings on my new leads and I'd spend my late mornings on uh, cold calling myself to, to help that cold caller build my pipeline. And as more deals come in, I would keep running that system until I put about $50,000 away. At that point, I would go through the hiring ladder. I'd start by hiring an admin virtual assistant to do a lot of my data pulling, my skip tracing, my CRM maintenance, my KPI tracking, and get a lot of my time back on the admin side. Um, and then I would, from there, I would still be doing my, my TC work. I would still be doing my marketing, which is probably going to be hired out to an agency for a cold caller at this point. I'd be doing my acquisitions and I'd be doing my dispositions, right? So those are the four I'd still be very involved in. On the fulfillment side, um, that's the next thing I would tackle. So once I get three, four, five deals under my belt, I would go hire a part-time transaction coordinator to handle my paperwork, three to five hundred dollars per file. Then at that point, I would keep moving myself to the delegation ladders I talk about all the time and continue to work my way up and fail. I'd make a good hire, a bad hire, but you keep learning and keep going. At the same time, I'd be working my pipeline. That that's a part of this journey. So many of you guys want to skip the part of you having to hammer your pipeline yourself, the part of you doing um, cold calling yourself, the part of you doing transaction coordination while you're doing cold calling, while you're doing acquisitions, while you're doing dispositions, and you're, it's chaotic, it's stressful, but that that is the walk, that is the price of admission. The price of admission to wholesale or go direct to seller is not an incredible amount of money. It can be just working your face off. And um, I cold called for four or five, six months before my first deal, and I continue to do it after. I'll still get on the freaking phone. Uh, and, and as I've started other companies, I'll, you know, I'll give you an example. One of the companies I started, I was, I was trying to prove product market fit and uh, find our best avatar. And I would stack my Saturdays. On Saturdays, I had a seven, eight, nine, ten, ten 10 book calls on Saturdays that I would take. And I, I would still do that. I would do whatever it, whatever it takes. The answer to yourself should be, it's whatever it takes. And truly in this business, it's just a numbers thing. It's, it's can you talk to enough people to get to that next twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars 40000 deal and uh, keep the faith and keep going. And a lot of you can. And that would be, that would be how I'd start right, in a new city. So if I wanted to get to a couple of deals, stack 50 grand or so, in a new city, that's the exact path I would follow. I would start by, again, 
uh, buying a list, finding a way to scrape $1,000, buying that list, starting a cold call, get my first deal. From getting my first deal, I'd reinvest that into more of that, more cold call leads as well as still cold calling myself, getting better and better at sales, getting my reps in. And then from there, slowly start hiring myself out using the direct delegation ladder. And usually people get to fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollars a month, then they'll have a bad month, a good month. But if you're consistent with that and you start putting the pieces in place and building the muscle the muscle of team building and delegation, um, you can get to a very, very good place very quickly. And that is the point when I would start going to the networking meetups. That's the point when I start going to events and meeting people and starting to really build a strong network. Because the second thing I'd focus on after I have some deals coming in, it wouldn't be to go to $300,000 a month right away. It'd be going and building solid relationships. And what I would start doing, what I started to do, is I would trade equity in my deals for relationships. So if I have a really juicy wholesale deal, I might go partner on that deal with a, with a really well-known wholesaler or flipper in town and build that relationship because they can become lenders for me. They can become partners for me. They can become advisors for me. Um, And I have built a very strong network of advisors, of mentors, of partners, business partners, associates associates, uh, from doing this. And so the second thing I would do after getting off the ground and getting myself to a point where I'm just doing sales, I'm just doing acquisitions and dispositions. Once I was at that point, I'd really focus on my network because your network's going to make it easier for you to hire a salesperson. Your network's going to make it easier to sell deals and build reputation. And I'd really, really, really focus probably the next six months on my network and on partnering on deals and building relationships. And this is, this is what I did. This is what set me, I believe, what, what helped me scale way quicker than I ever imagined in all my companies and my is it, relationships. It's people. It's people who I can text and call and lean on when I'm going through a certain situation, a certain bottleneck, a certain issue. And that's what a lot of you guys are missing. You're taking, you're taking, you're taking, you're taking. You need to be giving and sharing and, and providing value and being value at because your your operation's not as big as you think it is. And you have way more upside than you think you do. But you need people. Um, it's people scale way faster than anything else. So if I, at this point, I'd find what step two would be building my network. Step one would be getting myself to a point using the method I just talked about where I'm doing everything besides admin fulfillment marketing. So I'm doing acquisitions and dispositions and managing my team. Then I'd go phase two, build my network. And then phase three, I'd become, it'd, it'd be pushing towards leadership. So at this point, it'd be really scaling now that I have my network, be building uh, relationships, making strategic hires on the sales side, on the leadership side and really building towards what I want to build long term. But you have to first go through the trenches. You have to first put in the the sweat equity into your business, so to speak. And you have to get out of that hustler phase. Right. Once you get to your operator phase where you're managing a team instead of you doing the work, right? There's three phases of management and leadership, right? Phase one is a team lead. A team lead is you're doing the work, but you're also teaching the work at the same time. So you're doing, but you're teaching. That's phase one, team lead. Phase two is more management. So you're not doing the work, you're managing the work. And then phase three is, is leadership where you're, you're leading a team, you're not managing a team, or you're not doing uh, the activity. So a CEO is more of a leader, right? A COO slash department head slash sales director, client success director, transaction director, operations director is more of a, a managerial role. Then you have the actual team leads who are doing and teaching, right? Then you have the actual just employees who are just just doing. Those are the four levels of positions in a business. And you want to slowly work your way up and and build your team because the reality is you're going to build a great business because you build people and your organization, right? You cannot build a $5 million company just because you're awesome. You're going to build great people who then build a great business. That's going to put you in a really good spot to do what you want to do. So that is today's show. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed today's show about kind of starting over in a new market and focusing one on traction, then two on network, then three on scaling. That's an equation that's worked incredible for me and I've seen it work for a lot of other people. So as always, you guys, we don't we don't do paid promotion behind this podcast. We only grow organically. So a like, a share, a review, you telling your friend, you telling your business partner, you telling a family member about the show is how we grow. A, a share on your story, a DM it means the world. I listen to a lot of your guys' DMs. I meet, I meet so many of you at events and you walk up and say, man, uh, one, one of the examples last event is, hey, I just binged your every podcast you've ever, you've ever done, which is about 100 now in a two-week span. And uh, the next two, the next 100 are going to be even better. Um, so again, whatever platform you're listening on, a like, a share uh, means the world. And as always, you are only one deal away.